I cannot tell you guys how happy I am to say Doom Patrol is back! What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mega Geek Mixer here to give you guys my review of Season 2 of Doom Patrol. And guys, what a great episode. It's nice to see this show back from its hiatus because I've missed it ever since it left us. And I am also happy to say that it has not changed much at all. It's pretty much still the same. It's got that adult content out there and stuff, but it's also got that dark stuff and that weird stuff and all the unexpected things that made Doom Patrol so such the great season that it is, the, and most of all, the casting. These guys and their performances as the characters are second to none, and I'm glad to know they have not lost their step, but I had no doubts about that at all. I knew they wouldn't lose their step because they are that invested in their roles. They enjoy they enjoy those roles very much, but I'm also loving this new girl who has now taken the role of Dorothy. I look at that little girl, and yeah, I mean, yeah, people might be, be a little surprised with her face and stuff at the same time. Anytime I see that little girl smiling and stuff. It just makes me feel so happy. And seeing her and the chief and having their father-daughter moments from the seriousness to the lovely father-daughter moments that you should have and stuff, it's really great. It really is. But of course, with all the happiness and stuff, we also still got the bitterness because it's not been that long since back in the season finale that from where they start here in season two because when we start here in season two only some weeks have passed since their last battle with Mr. Nobody and Danny the Street and the rest of them except Larry being shrunk which I must say I'm glad they were showing us some humor to that because think about it those guys are all for weeks have been shrink and just trying to live out their lives doing whatever they all want to do and we all see them individually as the show goes on but still to to see larry ma making sure they still get to eat is hilarious he makes them weeny teeny tiny pancakes oh, oh i just couldn't l help but laugh at them i mean seriously and to I'm not saying that that's not possible. I think it's pretty clear. It's possible for you to make such a teeny weeny tiny pancake. But even still, to see those things and to see them being eat, eaten by sore people, <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh at that. But I'm glad they added that humor there. It was really fun to see. But, but like I also said, guys, with all humor, humor and weirdness and... The adult content, yeah, like always, don't shy away from it. As in the beginning of this episode, they actually show us how, of Dorothy, of where she was before she met her father. And yeah, sadly, she was with the circus. And this was back in the 1920s, so I don't think any of us were surprised when we saw how people were treating her and stuff because of her appearance and everything. So, no surprise right there. But we also, throughout this episode, got to understand understand her abilities. I'm not really sure if it's the same in the comic, if it's comic accurate, but I'm pretty sure it is. And the fact that she has the power to have imaginary friends, and it's really great. One of them being that wolf deer who, who we saw back in season one when we were looking into the chief's past. But we also found out that there's an evil, dark imaginary friend that she has. One that she knows is evil and bad. And while we didn't see it in this episode, I've already seen... I've already taken a little peek into episode two. So... And I saw what I saw there. I will let you guys know, for some of y'all who may have already seen it, but for some of y'all who haven't seen episode 2, click away click away from this now, because it's going to spoil a little. But in episode 2, what we see in episode 1, we see in episode 2 in a different perspective. In episode 1 here, we're seeing things from Dorothy's perspective inside the cage and while she's in the circus. And all we know is that a manslaughter had happened by Dorothy. Dorothy, unintentionally, mind you, because she was just scared. She's a little girl, and it's understandable she's she's scared and stuff. Unfortunately, though, that interacts with her powers, and it makes her do things that she probably wouldn't, no doubt, she wouldn't want to do. And she saw it, and she was horrified by what she saw. But when coming episode two, we see it from the audience perspective because. 
if y'all saw in this episode, after it was all over and she escaped her cage, we she spotted Niles, her father, there. And that, in episode two, is where we get from things from Niles' perspective, because he's in that audience during that time. But that's where I'll leave it at, and I'll go into full detail with it in episode two here, once I do my review of it. But still, I loved how they started this off by at least letting us know where she was then and stuff, to how she met her father. And then, going into the present, I loved how she interacts with almost each of them, not all all of them mostly she interacts with cliff and cliff and and uh, jane in this one i i'm pretty sure she didn't interact with rita or or cyborg like sure she was there when they were around but she didn't exactly talk with them like she did with cliff and crazy jane and yeah they don't for now they both have a different relationship with her and yeah and for like uh what's the best way to put it? yeah jane she She's going through some problems right now. After learning about the Chiefs' betrayal and everything, she's pretty much been on drugs and everything. One of those instances kind of made her go blow off on, on, on Dorothy. As a matter of fact, for some reason, somehow, Dorothy was able to get to see inside her mind, inside the underground. Because that drug that that Jane is doing is causing problems in the underground. And we learned here that the underground is a place that is supposed to be helping Kay, Kay Olivia, who if I'm not mistaken, who if I remember correctly, yes, is is uh, Jane's original name or is her original personnel or something. There's so much about Jane, I still gotta really look up into this there for that one but even still though to know that the drug she's taking is causing problems in the underground that it's that they're saying time for a change makes you wonder what is that what could that mean but still also to find out that Dorothy's powers Dorothy's powers allow her to look inside the underground that's amazing and stuff but we also see here that Jane, while she may be mad at the chief and stuff, she knows not to take it out on her daughter, on his daughter and stuff. And as a matter of fact, we're kind of seeing she, she has a soft spot for little girls. But who can blame her? I mean, okay, this, this little kid has an unusual face and stuff, but she's still a little girl. She's, she's very adorable and stuff. You don't want to... You don't want to hurt this girl's feelings and stuff, but of course, yeah, sometimes as adults, we kind of are got a lot on our plate here that we accidentally sometimes take things out on kids, even though we don't mean to and stuff. It's just as Jane said, even if we have adult problems and stuff and a lot of baggage, it doesn't give us a reason to be assholes to the kids. It, but hey, at least Jane knows that and knows to apologize for, for that. And yeah, we all do that. We all make that mistake, so there's no shame in that one. However, though, with Cliff, that's a bit of a different story. Now, one thing we all know about Cliff, and we all learned this back in Season 1, is that he wasn't really a great person when he was Cliff Steele and stuff. I mean, I mean, seriously, cheating on your wife with a, with a nanny and stuff... And we can't really say how good of a father he was, but we do know he acknowledges that he wasn't the best of fathers. And one thing I think we can all know is that he had, he had some sort he had a temper problem, but we also learned that it came from his father because we saw a little of it in season one in a flashback to show the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And once again, we saw it here when he's getting a flashback to talking with his father and how he's saying that Cliff loses his self-respect and listen to everything his wife says. Now, it's true we may all sometimes want our self-respect and stuff. I get that, but the way he's sounding it, he's saying, keep your self-respect no matter what, even if it's for... The even if it's for the sake of your child or your family and stuff and like that. And that's where I'm like, whoa, man, that's where you got to kind of draw the line here because when it comes to family, you sacrifice things because that's how it is in the real world. Take Niles, for instance, he knows that himself. But even still, though, like back on topic to Dorothy, he kind of just tolerates her. But at the same time, since he's still pissed off at the chief after what he did, which is very understandable, he kind of also takes it out and bees and bees mean to his daughter as well. Kind of like since that's his daughter, he should treat her kind of the same way. 
and we have all know that it's wrong right there. He has every right to be mad with the chief, but don't take it out on this little girl. When he took her for a joy ride, I was like, good man, bond with her. Don't let what her father do go to her. She had nothing to do with that. But then how he just lashed out at her, but that was mostly because of a panic attack and then seeing her, one of her imaginary friends that he just flipped out, really. But even still, whether he flipped out or not, harsh, dude, harsh. But, if there's one thing I will say, is that I'm glad that Cliff finally is getting revenge. Or better yet, let me put it this way. Cliff gets some vermin vengeance. <laughs> oh, I always love saying that. Yeah, and this, he's grown a, a hatred for rats. And he always looks like he's going to feed them. When in reality, he just wants to go out there and knock some out and kill some of them. As revenge for what Admiral Whiskers, Whiskers did to him back in season Ah, uh, Clef. What are we gonna do with you, man? <laughs> but now that I've said all that, though, we gotta go into the others. Like, Rita, for one, it turns out she now wants to be a superhero, and she's going to Cyborg for some help with that because she's actually trying to train to learn how to be the actual Alaska woman we know from comics and iterations of TV shows and stuff. <laughs> While in the meantime, Cyborg didn't really have much to do in this one. However, Larry did have something to do in this one. Something I was very curious about, especially back in season one. We knew he had family commitment issues with his wife, but we never really saw what kind of dad he was, which is what we got here. We actually got to see a flashback of him back with one of his sons, Gary, who, and it shows here that he wasn't being a very appreciative father. I'm, because when his son actually made something to appreciate him with, it, he made a rocket, but he didn't put the rocket where it was, and instead of praising him for all the effort he put into it out of appreciation and proud he is of his father he actually he actually went and took crit criticized them on like how it's not right and that's where i was like dude it was something of appreciation it doesn't matter how it was you should have been proud of him and no and yeah it's kind of showing he was but at the same time kind of criticize him saying you gotta make it right it was kind of funny of him to say that and stuff I and mean, that's maybe kind of not fair of me to say but yes maybe it's just something that kind of popped in my head there but even still though later on we find out why the negative spirit is doing this to him and that's because gary is is dying or better yet he died at the end of this episode why Poor guy, never got to even see his son once, once before. That sucks. But, now that I've said that though, we must talk about how they all went back to normal at the end of this episode. It turns out, the chief actually went to an old friend of his. An old friend back in season one. That being the magician himself, Ki Kibling. <laughs> yeah. Kibling, that magician who was trying to stop the D creator and then they created the recreator. Yeah, he he came, he was asked for help to re with magic to reset them back to normal, but it came at a high price. But before knowing that, we found we found out that Kibling knew all along about what he did to to Cliff, Jane, Larry, and Rita and Cyborg. But no surprise, I mean, within episodes three and four. I mean, four and five, or I don't remember which ones those were. All I just know is he already gave us a hint that there was more about Niles that he didn't tell those, that he wasn't telling the Doom Patrol guys. And yeah, now they know. And yeah, he ain't surprised by it. And he also knows of his daughter and stuff. But in the end, though, he did cold up his end of the bargain by, ha by changing them back to normal. But it came at the price of the chief giving giving up the, a necklace a necklace that actually turns out it seems to be very important because it seems like once he gave him that he was saying that he was dying and that's where i'm like saying to myself was that necklace keeping him alive because that sure is what it's looking like here and yeah dorothy found out as well and yeah she's not happy about it that that dark imaginary friend of her showed up saying she he can save his dad her daddy almost as if this guy's going to be the main antagonist for this series and it's up to the doom patrol to find a way to stop him 
I don't know how they're going to, but let's see how he does. Because the mere fact that even Niles is very afraid of him and the intensity we got when there was a chance that he was about to come out of this little tunnel from the, tra from the racetrack that they were living in, of Cliff's racetrack they were living in, already sent chills down my spine. And that was nuts. Oh my god, what's gonna happen? I don't know. All I just know is we got a lot to look forward to. But until then, guys, I'm gonna leave it all at that. And if, the, and if you're enjoying my videos, all you gotta do is click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified when I make more videos. And until then, Mega Geek Mixer, signing out.